Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning into the Counterpoint podcast. I hope all our listeners are staying safe and healthy. And in this latest episode, we are going to talk about the new flagship phones from OnePlus. The company has just announced the OnePlus 8 and OnePlus 8 Pro. And we have two of our research analysts joining the discussion. We have Maurice and Karan with us. Hello, Maurice. Hi, Ritesh. How's it going? Great. And hello, Karan. Hi, Ritesh. So we just saw the OnePlus unveiling and uh, the focus around this time is on the improved design. OnePlus has focused more on the display enhancements. And of course, you have top-of-the-line hardware in the sense like you have the Snapdragon 865 SoC. You have new cameras with higher megapixel count and all. But one of the key selling points of this device is going to be 5G. Like both the phones support default 5G. So Maurice, where does OnePlus 8 series stand in front of competition? Yeah, so OnePlus had, I think, a a great launch uh, in 2020 here where they're really trying to distinguish themselves uh, from not from from being the small startup that uh, that started in 2014 to now in 2020 to really becoming a manufacturer of premium smartphones and this of course in 2020 will need to include 5G um, it needs to include the 120 hertz refresh rate that we've been seeing on other devices such as the Samsung S20 series. Um, and also the new Snapdragon 865 um, processor chip. So where does it stand right now in this competition? I think it firmly stands with these other premium devices that we're seeing. And and not only does OnePlus stop there, it has that LPDDR5 RAM, uh, it comes with Wi-Fi 6, uh, Dolby Atmos sound, and also uh, now being also IP68 certified, and having their own uh, wireless charging, um, it's called Warp Charge 30 uh, or 30T for um, for their charging technology, which essentially gets you about 50% battery in 22 minutes. So all of these things compi- combined really creates this feel and look of a premium device um, that that really stands out for OnePlus. And speaking for the U.S. market, at least. Um, for 5G, it, it's been um, a, a real challenger to Samsung and, and LG, which are the two other uh, players in the 5G market right now. And certainly having that 5G capability, especially millimeter wave support for Verizon um, and also the mid and low band for T-Mobile um, will set them apart in the competition. Right. And what do you think about the uh, compact version, the OnePlus 8? I think the OnePlus 8 is a great trade-off for between the, the OnePlus 8 Pro and the OnePlus 8. So you, you essentially have most of the features there um, that the OnePlus 8 Pro has minus you know, the 90 hertz refresh rate. Uh, it uses LP DDR4 RAM, uh, but it still has a Snapdragon 865 processor in it, uh, Wi-Fi 6, uh, the, the charging tech is the same. So it, it provides um, a good trade-off and will certainly do well in markets where uh, the, the high price point of the OnePlus 8 Pro will be be prohibitive. So in the US, uh, OnePlus is among the top three uh, in terms of the 5G smartphones, right? Correct. So in 2019, OnePlus was the third best selling 5G smartphone OEM in the United States. Okay. And right now, does it have any competition over there? So the U.S. 5G market, uh, if I go back to 2019, uh, basically started with the Samsung series S10 and the Note 10 um, Plus 5G, um, and also the LG V50. And now we have the LG V50, uh, V60 models that both have 5G. OnePlus came in actually undercutting the price a little bit with their first devices that came into the carrier markets for both T-Mobile and Sprint. And now we are actually seeing them increase their 
uh, presence in the carrier markets by also having a device for Verizon. And what is interesting here is that uh, the one the one plus eight UW device, which stands for ultra wide, um, will be uh, the the high frequency band uh, phone for Verizon versus uh, the the sub six or the mid band phones that we'll see at T-Mobile, um, which which is a great move by the company to really push five G forward um, and. Um, enabling them to continue on their their presence in this um, 5G market that's still pretty nascent, but will continue to grow in 2020 and 2021 onwards. And moving to India, OnePlus has been a leader in the premium segment. We recently saw Realme and Aiku launching their 5G devices. So, Khan, I would want to know from you, how will it impact the sales of OnePlus devices? Um, so, uh, like uh, as you mentioned, OnePlus was like become the number one premium smartphone brand in 2019. So, so what we are considering pre- premium that is like a thirty thousand plus uh, price band in rupees. So, uh, so Realme and IQ, what they are doing, they are actually following the footsteps of the OnePlus, like by providing the uh, industry top features and specification in a device and just delivering it it at a very competitive price so what realme and iq is smartly do they just provided the 5g smartphone in in the 35000 of the range which uh, like um, give the benchmark to the other premium smartphone to introduce the phone around that but in terms of like competition part they will uh, give the bit challenge to the oneplus but not in a, a like a in near term, in, in like a coming quarters, it's like difficult to break the uh, like a very big chunk of the OnePlus uh, phones. But yeah, sure. Yeah, so in uh, but but in a coming quarters, we are seeing uh, like uh, we are believe that there there will be more uh, premium smartphones because every Chinese brands want to increase their ASP from the mid segment to the premium segment. Now we have this situation with COVID nineteen where the supply chain has been disrupted and there are lockdowns in many countries and if we talk about the us it is where people would want to go out and buy phones from the store and with this lockdown i guess some amount maybe 60 percent of the stores are closed so how will this impact can you shed some light on it maurice yeah, of course. So since COVID-19 has been affecting the U.S. market heavily, uh, there are over, I think, 40 states right now that are on lockdown. And as you said, uh, we estimate that over 60% of postpaid stores, so which include T-Mobile, um, the Sprint stores that are still operating under T-Mobile, AT&T, and uh, Verizon, um, are closed right now. So this means there is a lot less foot traffic happening. Um, people are staying home and people can't go into a store and actually buy a device or even look at it. Um, this is affecting smartphone sales. And where we can see actually this uh, also having um, an effect is when you know when you go into a store, you also have a a rep that um, a representative um, in the store that basically tells you about a device that shows you the features that shows you how the camera works, um, et cetera, and give, and gives you um, suggestions on um, accessories that you can also buy. So all those things really affect how a consumer is purchasing a device. Now, when we look at OnePlus, um, as I said, again, in 2014, it started and it was essentially built up as uh, an online um, selling smartphone, and which since this time has really amassed um, a quite a bit amount of dedicated fans for the OnePlus brand. Where OnePlus has a bit of leverage here is that it can use this fan base and leverage them um, in, in terms of getting online sales, which is the way that the US market um, is currently at least uh, trying to sell the OnePlus device. If you look at the T-Mobile website right now, um, the OnePlus 8 is offered um, as an on- online-only device. So we're, we'll, we'll be seeing some shifts in, in sales patterns, but One OnePlus does have an advantage uh, due to this 
dedicated fan presence that they've had um, and just them being able to buy devices sight unseen um, uh, in terms of just an online shipment or an online purchase. Okay, so when you buy it online, are the deliveries working? Yes. So in the U.S., we still are able to deliver a uh, phone or rather uh, we can still get mail. So um, all the the, the big um, companies like FedEx or UPS, um, the American Postal Service, um, they all work in terms of being able to um, pr- um, get you the device to your doorstep um, as well. So that that is actually not the issue um, in terms of it. Where, where the additional problems actually come is you know, being able to set up the device correctly, being able to activate it, uh, transferring your um, pictures over, et cetera. That's where sometimes um, consumers have problems with. But again, as I said, uh, due to the OnePlus fan base being a little bit more tech savvy, um, that effect will be reduced. And moving to India, we have a total lockdown till third of may and in this time e-commerce services are not working deliveries are not happening so how will it affect the sales in india uh, so uh, like uh, we are like continuously estimating the india market for 2020 so this is like a weekly thing for us so like like after the announcement of the uh, mr pm uh, today to lock down till 3rd may so we are estimating around like 143 million smartphone will be shipped in 2020 as compared to the 158 in 2019 so most of the impact will be will be not happening from uh, we are not seeing uh, most of the impact happening from the like uh, supply side most of the impact will happen from the demand side and the lock on the total lockdown which is uh, like uh, um, which is in um, April month and maybe uh, they will extend to the May month. So we are seeing that offline brands will be impacted more as compared to the online brands, which are selling more in online markets like OnePlus, Xiaomi, and Realme. So after this lockdown lifted, then online brands will be uh, will be the uh, like have the good opportunity to sell more phones as compared to the offline brands. If we look at OnePlus. Over the years, it has steadily been increasing the pricing of each and every model. In short, we can say that it has gone from being a flagship killer to a flagship. So does it still have an edge over the competition? What do you think about it, Maurice? Yeah, so what I mentioned earlier is, again, that the OnePlus brand has steadily building up to that, as you've said. Um, and where it it has that edge is really all, all the new specs that are mentioned for the OnePlus 8 Pro and the OnePlus 8 are really focused on performance and being fast. Um, you have fast wireless charging. You have the 120 hertz refresh rate. You have um, the ability to... Um, use that Snapdragon 865 processor f- with 5G and also Wi-Fi 6 to get you the fastest speeds you you need for your uh, streaming or gaming ca- capabilities. And I think this is where really OnePlus will um, see its edge over others in terms of just showing you all the capabilities it has of being one of one of the fastest and most powerful um, phones on the market right that we have right now. Um, and doing that in, in, in a form factor and um, in a price that is competitive towards um, with, with what we have in the market right now. So I think those two things are, are going to, or those are the things that are going to really um, help them in, in this market um, for the premium devices. Okay. And Khan, if we talk about the India market landscape, we have new rules like GST among other things. So how will this pricing affect OnePlus? Uh, so uh, like in premium segment, I don't think GST will impact more for the OnePlus because in that segment, the brands have like a very huge profit margins. So they will um, they will like uh, take this impact to, to themselves rather than just uh, carry forwarding to the uh, consumer. 
but in like a budget segment and mid mid segment the top major brands like samsung and xiaomi already uh, announced the hike in the price but i i don't think in premium segment they will that will have more impact on that because of they have uh, like huge profit margins in that segment and also they are just like kind of featured uh, like one plus is introducing like wireless charging and all so they the price is justifiable so then it will be no and before we get to the end of this podcast i would want to know from both of you as to what are the top 3 features that you find interesting of the OnePlus 8 devices in terms of both the OnePlus 8 and 8 Pro so for me again what what i repeated in the beginning is this this mantra of um being fast and having strong performance so for me it's the having the 120 hertz refresh rate um the LPDDR5 ram uh which puts it ahead of a lot of the competition right now um in terms of the specs on on both of them and lastly the the wireless charging aspect really having 50% battery in 22 minutes of charging um is is not something that we usually see in the market so that those all will be well received by consumers looking for um those types of specs and these are also one of the first android smartphones after the pixel series to get the google stadia right so one of the things that they mentioned on their launch which was interesting was that it will be coming with google stadia support uh in the future so while this is actually some a feature that will be available in all android models um the specific emphasis on stadia is is a sign that oneplus really wants to move forward and trying to be a leader in the gaming space so having that announcement uh, baked into the their launch um event um is a signal for that okay and what about you karan so like the design of the phones there is like a first feature uh, i look interesting like for like in whatever they have done to like oneplus 8 it reduces the overall area of the phone and reduces the bezels on that and for the like second feature i'll pick the refresh rate because th- that is something oneplus introduced in the uh, recent time and this another brands are picking up now they are still in the top in that game and third is like a as morris mentioned that like wireless charging the so oneplus has really up their game this time right i mean with the display to you know waterproofing and even giving wireless charging basically they are addressing the needs of their users like whatever it, it it has always been a brand that was listening to its customers uh in terms of uh, both the software and hardware and right now they are giving the customers what they have been asking for all these years yeah i think that uh, you nailed it right on the head um oneplus has really been a band, brand that uh wanted to strike um a good balance between being affordable and also offering um the latest and greatest in terms of specs and now as as we move forward into what OnePlus is doing um right as as it's becoming a flagship device it, it really is giving those extra specs that the consumers have been asking for and that's that's where it really i think will um will deliver and get get some good positive feedback from the community as these are things that um that they've been looking for for years especially that wireless charging aspect and with that i would like to thank both of you morish and karan for joining in this podcast yeah no problem thanks this and to our listeners i would like to say that uh, keep staying safe at home and healthy and uh, we also are present on other streaming platforms such as spotify we are there on soundcloud and tunein radio and we are also present on apple podcast so you can just go there and listen to our previous episodes if you have missed them so thank you for tuning in